Hi Thunkers, this is Simran from Thunkable and welcome to another video in the series where we learn how to use web APIs. So what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface and it allows your app and another data source to talk to each other. Now the web API component allows you to get data from any public or private data source on the web. Now a good way to think about the web API component is to imagine yourself going to a restaurant. Once you're there, you'll get a menu card and you can choose any food item from it. And that's exactly how the web API component works. You can go onto a database, look through their information, and choose the information that you want. In the description box below, we've included a list to a bunch of APIs that you can take a look at, including sources like YouTube, Yelp, and the weather. In this tutorial, we'll be creating an app that takes the artist name, a song title, and gives you the lyrics of that song right away. So let's take a look at how this app works. How this app works is that you'll be asked to enter in an artist name and a song title. So let's fill in that information. Let's do Pharrell and the song Happy. And now we'll just click Get the Lyrics. And there you go, you got the lyrics to the song and you can just scroll through them. All that we did in that demo was connect lyrics.ovh database to this app. Now, lyrics.ovh is a data source that stores song lyrics for hundreds of songs. This is pretty simple to set up and most of the hard work is already done by the database itself. So let's get started. All right, so our app will just have one screen. And this is a screen where you're going to be entering in an artist name, a song title, and then you'll click the get the lyrics button and you'll get all the lyrics. Okay, so let's build screen one. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll rename it to be lyrics screen. So now let's add in all the components that we'll be needing. So we'll need two text inputs. So we'll put them in here. We'll need a button. We'll need a column. And in that column, we're going to add a label. So let's format the first text input. Let's call it the artist name text. And this is where the artist name is going to be entered. So in the hint, we'll put in enter an artist name. And we'll just set the bottom margin to be 20. Now let's format the second text input. And we'll rename this to be song name text. And this is where a song name will be entered. So we'll say enter a song name. And again, we'll make the margin 20. Next, we'll format the button. So this we'll call the get lyrics button because this is what we'll click on in order to get the lyrics. And we'll just set the text to be get the lyrics. You can change the text color and background color to be whatever that you want. So I'll just make the background uh, transparent for this. Now let's format the column. So we'll call it the lyrics column because this is where all the song lyrics are going to be displayed. And it's very important that you remember that the height needs to be set to fit contents in order for us to be able to scroll through the lyrics. And we're just gonna go down in the sidebar and make sure that scrollable is set to true. And lastly, we're just going to format the label that's in the column and we're going to call this the lyrics label. And we're just going to leave the text to be blank right now because this is where the lyrics will be showing up. I also used a background image of a microphone in the demo that you saw, so I'm just going to add that in as well. But you can really just use any image that you want. And that's it for the design. There's one more thing that we need to add in, and that is the web API component. Again, the web API component will allow your app to talk to the lyrics.ovh database and get lyrics from them. So we'll just rename this to be Lyrics API so we remember exactly what this does. Great, so now we can learn how to program this app. Let's go to the blocks to do that. So for this app, a couple of things are going to need to be stored into placeholders, so that way we can use them within the app. And to do this, we use variable blocks. Variable blocks are just placeholders that we can store some data in until we need to use it. So we'll go into the variables drawer and take the initialize app variable name to block, and we're going to copy and paste it. We'll change the name of the first variable to be artist because in this variable we're going to store in the name of the artist that the user entered. And for the second variable we'll change the name to be title because this will store 
the title of the song that the user entered. Now we'll program the blocks that we need in order to start receiving data from the lyrics.ovh database. And to do this, we'll need to create a function. Remember that a function is just a set of blocks that do a specific task. So in our case, the function is just going to get lyrics from the lyrics.ovh database. So we'll start by taking a to do something block and we'll change do something to be get lyrics so we know exactly what this function does. The next thing that we want to do is set up the screen so that we can display the lyrics. So essentially, we want to clear up the screen with the components that were on it before so that we have room for our lyrics. So we can do this by setting the visibility of the components that were already on the screen to be false. So we'll click on artist name text set visible to false. We'll click on song name text set visible to false. And we'll do the same for the get lyrics button. Next, we want to put the information that the user entered, so the artist name and the song title, into the variables that we made. So we'll go to the variables drawer and we'll get set app artist to, and we'll set it to from artist name get text. And we'll do the same thing for set app title. And we'll click on the song name text drawer and we'll grab this one from song name text get text. So now the artist variable that we made has the name of an artist stored in it, the one the user entered. And same thing for our title variable. It has the name of a song that our user entered. Now in order to start receiving information, we need a specific web address. We can get this web address from the lyrics.ovh website. Now the easiest way to get to this website is just to put into Google lyrics.ovh API. And it should be the first link. We'll also add this specific link into the description box below, but this is what the website looks like. So this over here is a web address that you want to copy. It's in a very specific format, so remember that we can't change anything about it. So we have this web address for lyrics.ovh. You can also call it a URL. What are we going to do with it? So we're going to be adding specific endings to this URL to get certain information. So to start programming this, Let's click on the Lyrics API block and get the from Lyrics API set URL to. So we're going to go into the text drawer and grab this join block. And we're going to add two more items to it because we need four in total. And in the first block over here, we're going to paste in the URL. And the reason that we do this is to specify to the web API component that we want data from the Lyrics.ovh website and not from anywhere else. Back here on the lyrics.ovh website, they specify that in order to get information from them, they require you to tell them two parameters. So they want the artist and they want the title. And lucky for us, we already have those parameters. So those are the values that are stored in our artist and our title variable. So in our next block over here, we're going to actually add in app artist. And quickly referencing the website again, it says that artist and title need to be separated by a slash. So in our next block here, we'll add a slash. And for the last block, we're going to add in app title. So now we'll use the in Lyrics API call get blog to start receiving data from the lyrics.ovh website. So this call get web API block is composed of response, status, and error. But we really only need to worry about response because that's where the data is stored in from the database. So we want to make sure first that we take the from lyrics label set visible to block. And we set that to true because we want to be able to see the lyrics. At this point, we have all the data that we want from the lyrics.ovh website, but we need to remember that they give the data in JSON format. So what does that mean? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Basically, that just means the code is in a different format, and we need to change it into another format that our app can understand and use. In computer science, this term is called parsing the data. So we'll take a lyrics label set text to block. And we're going to take a get property name of object. And we're going to change property name to be lyrics because that's the type of information that we want from the website. 
And if we take a quick look at the lyrics.ovh website again, they specify here that in order to get lyrics from them, you're going to have to add in the word lyrics to your app. Now we'll connect to this a get object from JSON block, and we'll add to that response. So let's go through this again. We're taking the response that we got from the website that's in JSON format, and we're converting it into an object format that our app can understand and can display. And we're almost done. The only thing left to do is to tell the app when to actually call this get lyrics function. So we want this function to run when someone clicks the get lyrics button. So we'll click on the get lyrics button and we'll take the when get lyrics click block. And all we have to do to this is add the function call. So we'll click in the functions drawer and get get lyrics. There you go. Now you have a working lyrics app using the lyrics.ovh database and the web API component. So let's quickly live test it to make sure that it's working. Okay, so we'll enter in an artist name. So let's say Ed Sheeran and song, perfect. So we'll click get the lyrics. And there you go, here are all the lyrics. Awesome, so you now know how to use the web API component and you can make some really fun apps with this. Remember that in the description box below, we have a link to many different web APIs and I encourage you to check that out so you can try making apps with different companies' databases. So we'll be creating more web API tutorials and we really look forward to seeing what you build. So thanks for thunking.